So my name is Ben Reed. I'm with Santa Clara County Fire Department in the uh, Bay Area in California. Uh, we, have, uh, we have a type one hazmat team with seven specialists. And this is our new hazmat rig. It, it's followed by a breathing support. On this rig, we use, we use a, a driver and a captain. And then on the rig that follows, there'll be two other firefighters. And what we do, the reason we chose this rig is because of that, we only mainly operate with two people on this rig and then the chase vehicle that has two other people. We do have seating in the office for that, but that's why we chose the two-door cab from Spartan. To utilize more of the doghouse, what we did was we optioned a roof mount AC and heater unit. And um, again, it's just a two-door cab. So we have everything behind that that's just for storage, a map box, and then whatever else we're gonna mount when we get it back home. So this part of the rig is uh, what we would kind of call as the office. Uh, what we do in here is we're gonna be doing our, our tech, tech ref. Um, it's probably gonna be used as command at some incidents as well. You know, the, the deputies and battalion chiefs are probably gonna utilize this potentially, um, depending on the incident. But with our department, we do, we go to every full first assignment for, for structure fires. We also do hazmats throughout the county, depending on what the needs are. So what this does is it gives us a, a quiet space where we're able to uh, figure things out and, and strategize what we're gonna do for the incident. Okay, so inside the office, just as far as the control area, we, we had them put the controller for the heating air conditioning along the wall with the pop-out function, which uh, we have just shy of a three foot pop-out here. And we can, we can operate that over here as well. And just some lighting controls. This right here for us, we chose to go with an auxiliary generator to operate the, uh, the functions we need, the things we need to run while we're on an incident instead of running the rig with a power takeoff. So you're going to, you're going to see all our, all our switches here. Um, we have them separated from generator and then shoreline power as well. So moving on to this, the refrigerator here, uh, we do have a few testing, uh, kits that we need to keep within a certain range of temperature. So that's why we have the refrigerator there. It's not for drinks or anything. It's for actual test kits back here, just shelving. So we're going to, um, you know, we, w what we did with a lot of our storage area is you'll see, um, power supply in all of them. And we have so many monitors, I'd say, you know, pushing a hundred monitors throughout everything we take care of. So we need power everywhere. So a lot of hazmat teams find themselves, you know, in need of power. So when you, when you scan around and see, and see all of our storage areas, you're going to see power everywhere, which was really key for us. Um, this right here is the pop out. We do have two seats here because on occasion we do need to take more than two people on this rig. So these are the compliance seats. So people can ride back here while we're going to the call as well. Um, moving over here, you know, uh, the whole idea of this side was pretty much storage of our monitors. And so, um, when you look in these cabinets, you know, they're, they're, uh, we put storage everywhere we could. Um, and then we have, you know, quite a bit of power when we did these. So, so you can see these strips down here, they, they custom cut them. If you pan down into the cabinet, you can see them right along the edges. And those goes, those go all the way down. So we're going to have many, many handheld monitors in here. That'll be powered all the time, both on shore power and on auxiliary power as well. So that's why we went with that auxiliary generator. This right here is data rack that they installed for us. So our IT department's going to install our computers. Um, if there's any additional power supply and then any, you know, any, any other powered unit can go into that data rack. So moving down the rig, just the first cabinet, pretty basic. Um, we have these here for our one hour bottles. So a little bit bigger, um, but being a type one team, you, we, there's a mandatory, there's a minimum requirement of how many bottles you carry. So these are going to be our one hour bottles. Um, just some of the functions of, of shelving that we chose fairly basic. Um, again, just 
the specific shelving we chose, rollouts. So these are gonna be transverse going both ways. So we can access them depending on what, what area we're in, we can pull them either side of the rig. And then these top ones are split in half on the rig. They come out and come down. So we can, we can actually access and utilize the entire uh, top of the, of the cabinet there. Uh, moving towards the back of the rig, we um, standardize in our department for the most part. Um, all the rigs typically have their EMS over here. So we just had a really, really basic cabinet, quarter, quarter depth and multiple shelves um, for the most part for our EMS. Okay, so, so these tall cabinets um, being on the hazmat, we do have specific uh, tubing and testing kits that we need that are very tall. We'll also probably store, you know, some of our longer fire equipment for structure fires. Um, so we tacked these tall cabinets on the back to get a little extra space without kicking the full, the full uh, rig out to reduce our, our, um, our axle drag. So hopefully we, uh, you know, utilize that in that way. We have also up here, this is for our weather station. What it allows us to do is just connect our weather pack to this, put it at the proper height and be able to determine where the chemical plume, where the cloud's going. So we can, whether it's gonna be to shelter in place or how people evacuate the area. A big part of that is what the weather is and that's what we use this built-in um, extension pole for. Uh, and then we just chose to go with the ladder in the middle um, our current rigs have them kind of on the back of the rig and we chose to go with this so it was a lot safer for us to be bringing equipment down. Some of the equipment up top that we have is fairly heavy. So, so we call these our coffin compartments. We would keep uh, long handled tools like brooms, uh, shovels, and uh, absorbent on either side. Currently plan on utilizing that here as well. And then this, this compartment is where the auxiliary generator is we chose to put it on top so that we can have the exhaust go up and power the entire rig so we aren't having to run the entire rig as far as the engine so this rear compartment we have uh, just simply the built-in uh, tool chest for all of our hand tools that we use and um, above that you see this long rollout tray so what we use this for is we're actually storing our overpack drum in here. We'll be able to roll it all the way out, put the overpack drum on and roll it back in, um, which improves its storage in comparison to our current rig. We will be able to utilize that. That'll be a really big benefit for us. You also see the steps that we have here. We put, um, and they're in about four areas of the rig. And what that does is it offers a step to get taller on the rig and then also you could use it as a seat as well um, and then if he, in here in the back we have our awning controllers so we can actually uh, roll out our awnings and uh, they'll roll back in on their own they're powered so a little improvement there as well this is essentially the other side of the other rig just the same uh, layout so there's not much to talk about here